Folks, I was in Italy some years ago uh, in Florence and I was uh, strolling down the street in Florence and I came upon this antique shop and they had a big sign in the window that said genuine Stradivariuses <coughs> for sale. Wow, I never, I, those uh, violins uh, sell for millions of dollars. I'd never seen a Stradivarius violin before. Uh, so I had a, or heard one play, so out of curiosity, I walked into the shop. And uh, when I uh, got into the shop, I was in for a surprise. They didn't have any Stradivarius violins. Instead, they had all sorts of items that they claimed had been made by Antonio Stradivarius. Oh, everything from pool cues to um, lawn chairs to uh, toilet seats to uh, golf clubs. As a matter of fact, the owner of the establishment told me that this clothes, uh, this suit hanger, see this is where you put the slacks, this suit hanger had been uh, made by uh, Antonio Stradivarius in the year uh, 1721. Actually, it has a very small letters. It has his signature, the date, and Cremona, Italy, which is where he had his uh, shop. Well, I ended up purchasing it uh, for um, 300 lira, which is equivalent to about $200. Uh, dollars. I think to myself, Wow, did I get a great deal or, or what? I mean, a genuine Stradivarius uh, hanger. Uh, so when I got back to the States, I showed it to an antique appraiser and I had to find out what it's worth. And he examined it very carefully and then told me that there's no such thing as a, a Stradivarius hanger. Well, that was news to me. I was flabbergasted. Well, then what's it worth, I asked. He looked at it and said, approximately $5. Well, live and learn. Anyway, I completely forgot about the hangar until about two years later, and I, I was, um, it was uh, actually early May, and I was uh, rummaging through my closet. I was kind of in a hurry, uh, rummaging through my closet, looking for this plaid blazer that I had that I wanted to wear to the Kentucky Derby. Well, I finally found the blazer and uh, just yanked it out of the closet, causing the, its hangar to crash to the, the wooden floor of the closet. Well, when it hit the floor, it made this malefic, mal melodious, beautiful sound. So I picked it up and looked at it and I said, wait a second, is this the hanger that I purchased in Italy for 300 lira? And so as if possessed by a demon, I then uh, started unscrewing the beam that goes on the bottom, you know, where you put the pants. And uh, I started playing it like it was a, you know, like a violin or something like that. Uh, I, I, I'm going to actually, sh I'm going to show you, show you what I mean. But I must warn you first, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really no... Um, Yasha Heifetz when it comes to uh, playing the violin, but I, I play, I do play like, you know, a few songs, uh, you know, like Happy Birthday, and you're walking to sing along, you know, when, when I get to it. Uh, okay, so, uh, let's see. Okay, okay, here we go, okay. Okay, uh, it needs rosin, you know, a professional violinist like myself, you put a lot of rosin on, on a violin, okay. Okay, it's enough rosin. Um, okay, here we go. It sounds pretty good, you know, I think it sounds okay. It sounds like more or less it's in tune. Here we go. Yeah, that's the scale, that's the scale, that's the scale. Okay, so are you ready? singing along. Hey, what do you say I play some classical um, music, you know, for the highbrow uh, sophisticates in the audience? If you're sophisticated, please uh, raise your hand. Oh, okay. If you're unsophisticated, then uh, please flap your arms like this. Uh, that's enough. Okay. And now for some uh, little classical. In classical enough to have Scott Joplin. Oh, you you want heavy, heavy classical, heavy. Let me get into a, a serious mood here. Okay, okay, here we go. Ah, oh. and finally, folks. 
I will reveal to you a secret. Even things that seem mundane, such as a wooden clothes hanger, are actually magical and mysterious.